So also we try to, to, to use this ligation cyclization because it's a ligation, but at the same time we are cyclizing a peptide with the side chains. And you will see everything we did with this later. And also we're using a side chain with the C terminus so we can do whatever we want. Because our idea was not only to cyclize, but this lactam uh, bridge that is formed has a further functionality here. And we said we have to use this for the functionality, for example, for the pegylation of peptide, for the lipidation, for the glycosylation, for everything that people try to do with peptides to increase properties, to increase activities, and to you. Especially so we can use the, cyclis the cyclization for the introduction of conformational constraint and at the same time for the introduction of exocyclic functionalities in oligopeptides. And this is the first idea that we implement. So there are families of lipopeptides, and this is part of, a, of an European project of the, of the German Council of Research, it's like a CNEPK, CNEPK of, of Germany. So there are some type of peptide which, has incor which have incorporated a fatty acid change here. And said, so we said, let's take a fatty acid, functionalize with an UGI reactive functional group that we already work with that, and let's take a peptide. Let's see if we can cyclize and in incorporate the lipidation in only one step. And this is what we, are, we did in the last uh, year and a half, so we can use either a, the combination of, a carbox, of the aldehyde with the carboxylic acid in a passerini three-component reaction. Remember the passerini give rise to this Depsy peptide motif here, but this is the one found in, the, in this sulfactin, in this antibacterial uh, lipopeptide. So we have a multi component cyclization, which is a ligation approach. It's only a, in, a, in an intramolecular way. And then we incorporate by the use of these lipidic isocyanides. And we can do the same with the with the weak reaction and also implement, implement our concept. So we cannot incorporate only one lipid chain, but two. And this is different from everything that has been done before. And this, uh, the activity of the compounds amazingly was a little bit higher than the natural compound. This is always good for the publication. If you are not lucky, then you, you have to justify otherwise. But <laughs> if your compounds are active, are as active as the natural one, then you are lucky and you can publish that very well. And then we enter into this type of unique compound. This is gramicidine S. This is a cyclic peptide containing, which is, is characterized by the beta herpin structure. So a beta herpin is an, a beta sheet structure having a beta thorn motif here. So this is a beta thorn, and this is a further beta thorn, forming a beta herpin. A herpin is like a, you know, that the women, women use. So this, beta her this cyclic beta herpin approach is very, this compound is very active. It ha has an amazing antibacterial activity, but it's also hemolytic. So it, it will never go to the market because it kills the, the blood cells also. So it, it, it has a high, strong antibacterial activity. So there is an, a strong structural activity relationship uh, program to study which amino acid can be substitute and replace by another one to increase the antibacterial activity and to drop down the hemolytic activity. And they have realized that none of these amino acids can be replaced, only the proline. But what happens? If you take out the proline, then the beta thorn structure is completely destroyed. And the, act the activity, the antibacterial activity, which is based on the interaction of this polycationic compound, because this compound leaves all the hydrophobic a fragments to one phase and the polycatonic fragment from the other phase. So it's also an amphipathic compound. But if you remove this problem from here, then the uh, beta turn here uh, is lost. And then you have no uh, beta harping structure. And then we thought, can we use a UGI four component reaction to incorporate here? Because we know that proline, what proline does is to induce a cis conformation in this amide bond here. So can we do that with this N-alkylation, which is the product arising from the UGI-4 component reaction? And at the, same, at the same time, can we incorporate further functionality? So we are always using the concept of we can do what the others cannot do because we are using a multi-component approach. And this is what we are doing now. Probably this is the most beautiful that we are doing our that NAMA. So we are studying by NMR, which are the structural requirements for the beta tone of type 2 formation. This is an intramolecular hydrogen bonds between this 
a proton and this carbonyl that you can see by NMR, so you can only by NMR before measuring the biological activity, you can realize if you have a beta tone as a structure in this to, to get the beta hyperpin, and then we are trying to do this. Actually, we don't have uh, yet the, the NMR results, but we have the compounds in hand. So we, we did two different strategies. First of all, a multi-component ligation. We have a pentapeptide, and we have another pentapeptide. It's the same. We have only to prepare the same pentapeptide, the protection of the C terminus, and the protection of the N terminus, of the N terminus and then to make the ligation here. This ligation, this is a multi-component ligation. Here we are incorporating, we are using a commercially available isocyanide, but we can do, use whatever we want, a lipid if we want. So this is the word idea. And then we make a deprotection and a further cyclization. And then we got in, seven, in 37 uh, gil of the cyclization this type of compound. We have three or four in hands now because we did it also in solid phase. We are finding that this cyclization is not so, so good. So what we really realized that we could synthesize the peptide in solid phase, this is not done in our lab, but in a cooperation with the biotech institute in Cuba that they have all the technology for solid phase synthesis. And then we can make the UGI in an acyclic version and then just cyclize by the peptide coupling protocol. Take a look that we have to cyclize only here because we are cyclizing a D amino acid with an L amino acid. Otherwise, you get some racemization, some epimerization on the C terminus while the cyclization step is, is going down. Even, even, even though we, we have from 3 to 5% of racemization in this cyclization step. So these are the two different approaches, solution phase approach and a solid phase approach that is is being implemented in our lab. Actually, this article is not even ready for publication because it needs still a lot of results, but I wanted to present to you. And then I'm going to talk about the bidirectional approach. So during my PhD time, I, I use a lot of this approach. So everyone still is trying to do something different, but only always you I want to apply something that I learned from my PhD time. So we learned how to, de how to do macrocyclization if we take if one molecule, not a functional group different from the other one. This is a, a typical cyclization of a peptide. So this is an amino and this is a, carb a carboxy component. You put the, the other two components and then you get the cyclize and you can make a ligation followed by a cyclization, like we did in the gramicidine approach. But can we put here F1 equal to F1 and F2 equal to F2, and then we have a bidirectional approach to uh, get compounds which are based on two UGI reactions, or two multi-component reactions. During my PhD, we did it with four, five, six different type of multi-component reactions. But we didn't with, with peptides. Now, we actually, we attempt to do this with peptide, and these are the results. So you can take a peptide. You can take advantage of the lysine inside chains. You can use it by functional building blocks with the same functionality here. This is a bidirectional approach. And then based on a double UGI four component reaction under pseudo dilution condition, you get this uh, macro cycle in which you try to protect or to introduce some conformational constraints into this peptide change. We did the same with longer, shorter, using pegylated D isocyanides. You can imagine that by now we know how to prepare these compounds in, in multigram scale. We make pots of, of five grams of this isocyanide. And then introducing some diversity. We did these examples of this just by modifying the amino acid that we are incorporated as an exocyclic element. And then we did the same with the, with the carboxy, the isocyanide combination. Take a look, that is the same, but here is a diamine, here is a, 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 a decarboxylic acid, but we use the side chain of glutamic and aspartic acid. Somehow the concept is similar. And then we did the same by synthesizing the peptide on solid phase. We have a tremendous cooperation that makes this for us. So, Actually, if I come back next year, I'm planning to give a, a course about solid phase synthesis because it's something amazing what you can do on solid phase. For example, for a peptide, you can make a epta 
maximum octapeptide by the solution phase synthesis, but if you want it longer, you have to do it on solid phases. It's amazing the potential of these techniques. And then we produce this type of peptide where we have two UGIs here with the carboxy groups free. And then this we release from the resin, and then once it is released from the resin, we can implement it. Uh, we can implement with it the, the double UGI cyclization approach, but always trying to ligate peptide to other type of molecule. In this case, the ligation is not for the incorporation of a functional uh, uh, element, but, also, but only for the incorporation of these pegylated chains, which really are known to protect peptide from, from the degradation from proteases and so on. So actually, we developed this approach because of the interest of the people in, in this laboratory that they really want peptide cyclized and protected because they are pharmaceutically more, they have a higher potential. But then we, we play around a little bit about this chemistry. We said, and we make two of these macrocyclization in a sequential way, and then we produce a peptide with these diamines and these decarboxylates protected here, and then we first an initial cyclization, followed by a very simple deprotection on, in base and a, and a second and a second macrocyclization here to obtain this amazing type of compound. These are macro B cycles including a peptidic uh, theater, uh, theater as one of the, of the change. And also, initially, we think about this compound application in supramolecular chemistry or something. But in Cuba, I have to say, we have no condition to develop supramolecular chemistry applications. So we, only, we stop it only in the, on the beauty of the synthesis. We also did the same with pegylations, because these pegylated chains are also known to mediate and to coordinate with cations and so on. So they are useful for the, in, for the complexation of cations along with the carbonyl bonds of the peptides. So in this case, the difference of these two approaches is that here we have the four functionalities already incorporated. We, we only have two of them protected. Here we have only two, and we incorporated the further reactive functionality in the first step. So we use here a bifunctional building block only one of the tails deprotected, and then after deprotection, we let this. But the type of, we did by, by NMR analysis, we found that the, actually the cavity of the compounds, it's completely different because they can look, this is the, the theater chain with these two connections, and here there is no theater chain. So you have three connect, con, uh, connections just joined to this uh, tertiary uh, amide here, tertiary amide, sorry. So the, the concept was different, but uh, uh, unfortunately we found no application for that. We also play a little bit with this type of macrocyclization that we developed a few years ago, but in this case with peptides. So we use a threefold macrocyclization approach. So we connect three different chains, not two, but three, one to one like this, just by using these building blocks functionalized with the UGI reactive functional group. So we can make like these cryptates, which are very useful for the, for the encapsulation of cations and polycationic molecules like ammonium, uh, ammonium molecules, derived molecules, and so on. And then we did it with these tripeptides, just to put tri uh, carboxylic acid along the, along the the sequence of the peptides, and then we, we were really capable to produce this type of peptidic molecular cage with the incorporation of 12 covalent bonds in a one-pot uh, approach. This is actually the beauty of this, is the high molecular complexity that you can uh, reach only in using multiple reactions in, in, in one pot. It's just to imagine how you can develop this approach and then to use it. We are Actually, sad that this approach has not found further applications for molecular chemistry, but I have to say that in Cuba we don't have technology for that. We, we would have to depend from someone else. So at the end, just to show you a final example, what we did here was this one. So we use the first macrocyclization followed by a second macrocyclization. There are these, all these approach can be regarded as ligation approach. We are ligating a peptide to a different molecule, okay? Although they are cyclization step. This is here. First macrocyclization, then we leave two functionalities. 
And then we make a second molecular cyclization to make these cryptans, these hybrid cryptans, where you have a peptidic chains incorporating. But we decided to do it only in one step. So we use a peptide with two carboxylate, a diamine, and a D-isocyanide, and then in a unique macrocyclization step, and not in two, but in only one, based on two UGI-4 components reaction, we get this. <laughs>